Well, headline inflation in this country ticked up to 3.3% in July. Meanwhile, core inflation eased a bit but held in that high 3% range. Those readings reflecting pressure on Canadian households, but also making the path forward for the Bank of Canada more complicated considering a big part of the increase came from rising mortgage interest costs. From Reaction, we are joined by Jean-Francois Perrault. He's Senior Vice President and Chief Economist at Scotiabank. JF, thanks so much for making time for us today. It's a pleasure. So uh, when you're looking at uh, the, the various readings of inflation here, I mean, we've got the, the annualized rate, the year-over-year -year change, the monthly, the core. Uh, what exactly are you tuned into the most? Yeah, listen, we're not paying that much attention to year-over-year -year measures of inflation. They reflect, obviously, what's going on currently, but they also reflect what's happened a year ago. So really, to get a sense of where inflation is going, kind of the dynamism of inflation, you got to look at month-over-month -month measures. And those give a little bit of a different story, depending on which indicator you're looking at on the inflation front, than some of the core measures. And this is particularly true, sorry, the, some of the headline measures. And this is particularly true when you look at core. So core inflation, as you've indicated, moderating on a year-over-year -year basis, depending on, again, one of the measures of core. Uh, but when you look at it on a month-over-month -month basis, it's a bit of a different story. You're actually seeing an acceleration in core. Not a huge acceleration, but an acceleration nonetheless. And from our perspective, that is more troubling than what we're seeing happen at the, at the kind of the year-over-year -year level or the, or the headline level. Because ultimately, core inflation measures, in principle, uh, at least how the Bank of Canada thinks, about it are measures of inflation that are more indicative of where inflation is likely to go in the future rather than the headline measures of inflation. So where is that strength coming from when it comes to the, the core month over month number? Well, it's pretty broad based, uh, you know, well over half of the of the kind of the, the the categories of inflation are rising either above or 3%, 3 or 4%. So it's still a very broad based increase in inflation. Now, what we're seeing kind of materialize in, in, in real time to some extent, and this has been going on for a bit of, a bit of time, is a gradual deceleration in goods price inflation, um, but a much more robust environment for service price inflation. They've also been coming down, but not nearly as much. And that, of course, reflects things like wages, which have been rising very rapidly or pretty rapidly, higher than inflation now, for instance. Uh, and, of course, the service sector is more impacted by the labor component than the goods services, so the good side. So it's, it's you know, broad-based, but... Uh, concentrated in parts of the economy now which are you know more uh, likely to be impacted by the Bank of Canada than, than perhaps some of the things that we've seen over the last year or so. So how do you think the, the Bank of Canada is viewing this? Well listen I mean they can't be happy about it right nobody wants to see inflation pick up uh, whether it's core measures or whether it's headline inflation um, so they are not going to look at this and say fantastic this is a great report for us. On the contrary, they're going to look at it and say inflation is breaking in the direction away from where we want it to go. Uh, if you recall, last inflation number, the headline number was 2.8%, which was in the 1% to 3% band. You can say that's a good thing. We've crossed back over the 3% now. Uh, but there's no question. They're going to look at this and say, listen, inflation, we want inflation to go down to 2% over a period of time. This is not consistent with that marginally so. So it's an element of concern for them. There's no question. They're going to look at this and say, and which is why markets are reacting the way they are, and, and maybe there's a need to be more aggressive on their rate path going forward because inflation isn't doing exactly what we want it to at this point. Do you think that the Bank of Canada will, will do more? I don't think so. Uh, certainly not for the September meeting. I mean, we have one month of inflation data, which is a bit of an issue, building on previous months. But we also know at the same time, though, that the Bank of Canada has been trying to engineer an economic slowdown. That's been slow in coming, you know, pardon, pardon the pun. Um, but we do know that in the third quarter, there is, you know, a fair amount of evidence that the economy is actually slowing now. Uh, so it's really kind of this horse race between is the economy slowing enough Will the bank kind of get enough comfort from where things are going from an economic perspective to offset some of the concern that it might have that inflation is, is, is you know, stubbornly high? And from that perspective, we know if we go back to the Bank Canada's most recent monetary policy report, they were expecting growth of 1.5% in the third quarter of this year. We're not going to get that. It's definitely going to be lower. Is it going to be zero? Is it going to be half a percentage point? Is it going to be very far away from where they expect? That remains to be seen. But certainly, as they will evaluate policy going into the next meeting, they will have to take into account that the economy will have been weaker 
almost certainly than what they expected it to be at this point in the year. And again, that argues, if that's true, that would argue for you know them being more comfortable with where they've been on the right side as opposed to less comfortable. And what do you make of this, um, you know, the, the influence of the higher mortgage interest costs? So this jump of 30% year over year contributing, you know, quite a bit um, uh, in the month of July. And, and if you do strip that out, then you, you, you get inflation in the mid 2% range or so. Mm -hmm. Should we be doing that or not? you know or should we consider it in that way or how are you looking at it yeah i mean that's a tricky one obviously when the central bank is raising interest rates and and mortgage rates reflect what the central bank's been doing you could argue that the, you know the stance of policy is actually contributing to inflation and there's an element of truth to that there's no question about it um i would say it's a little bit of a broader story than that though because we know the housing market has been undersupplied we know the housing market's under pressure and prices uh, and affordability has been an issue for a very long time actually it's been getting worse as as the bank has been raising interest rates so sure you know, you could take out mortgage interest costs, but at the end of the day, the value of homes has been rising uh, over the last number of years. And, and that is something that the Bank of Canada could and can do something about by raising rates. You lower the in principle, you lower the, the value of real estate. Uh, it just so happens in the current circumstance, you've got this unfortunate mix of supply demand conditions in the housing market, which are really tight, combined with higher interest rates, which are making this category explode. I mean, it's over 30% year-over-year. Year. There's no question about the importance of these as a driver of inflation. But generally speaking, I mean, I think you can expect the Bank of Canada to look at these mortgage interest costs, take them uh, into consideration to some degree, but largely look through them because they know that ultimately that much of what's going on there is a result of their own actions.